Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. <clears throat> uh, today, was reading through Twitter, um, kind of looking at some things. I did a, with the Finding Value website, we had a meeting with the Platinum members where they asked me questions, we went over a lot of stuff, and uh, it was. I thought it was a pretty good meeting. Hopefully uh, we'll have more of those and you guys can ask as many questions as you want. But uh, there is something I kind of want to go over um, just by reading this, and I'll go through this, and then I'll kind of go over what's going on uh, in my thoughts. So I was on Twitter here. Let me read it real quick. Uh, this is a big uptick or squeeze is imminent in the uranium sector. Uh, it is evolving to a cycle on steroids, and it's happening right now. Uh, the charts are primed. The utilities are relying on a WNA and similar models for supply availability. The model, however, is outright broken. And there's some stuff that they were talking about this model. Uh, Kevin went in there, he says, I've been saying this for a couple of years now, the forecasts are complete garbage. The demand will be off the charts above expectations, and that's proving true. On the other side, permitting and mine startups will prove to be major impediments to supply growth. I completely agree. Uh, we talked about this yesterday uh, on, the, on the meeting that we've had for the, for the website saying that um, as 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 demand comes back, uh, what I mean by as demand comes back, there's been power plants that have been decommissioned that will be recommissioned. If we have growth problems in renewables, uh, they're going to say flip back on the uranium, uh, the nuclear power plants. If they flip them back on, that's going to be immediate demand for those power plants when they come back online, when they're recommissioned. We don't have the, the supply for it. <laughs> so what are, what are we going to do? Um, that's your squeeze. And here, uh, reading below, it says that uh, there was a log chart at Bad Charts 1 put out showing 2023-2025 uranium at $420 a pound. And at Finding Finance, it's me, uh, much higher with ratios compared to gold. And the, the thing that I want to like make clear uh, on a lot of this stuff, and I don't know if people still fully grasp this, everything in life is a ratio. Uh, and, and I don't think people understand that. Let me let me go into it so people can maybe better understand. I know some people understand this, but maybe others don't. Um, the, the ratios that we look at, the assets, so let's call it a uranium to gold ratio. What we're looking at is the supply-demand balance. When that balance gets messed up, uh, the ratio compresses. So uranium will compress against gold uh, to a certain extent. That ratio compression over time is the supply and demand and the willingness of people to pay for that commodity. That is like the ultimate psychological peak. At least that's what history has shown. Now, when I talk about everything as a ratio, everything is priced in something. So we use ratios to, to identify value in an asset versus asset uh, ratio. So when we're looking at these, these things we can quickly identify throughout time if something's expensive or cheap based off of histo history of an asset versus an asset. Remember, gold used to be money. So the gold standard is or was money. Uh, so you're pricing against money. Uh, the currency today is the denominator of all of these things. <clears throat> so not only do you have the ratio going up and down of supply demand over time and the psychological limitations that humans have put in relationship uh, in the in that relationship so the ratio can compress down to a certain number and that's the psychological limitation that history has put on it uh, or how the markets became out of balance and how they rectified themselves through prices that's that limitation the denominator is the dollar and, and when you price something against gold, gold is accounting for the, for the money units in the system or the currency units, however you want to say it. So um, under market conditions, under certain market conditions, all of this basically uh, revalues itself. And we're looking not only at the numerator of the supply and demand, but the denominator of, of your value of your currency. And I don't think people fully appreciate the value of the currency aspect because we could get to prices of uranium that are absolutely ridiculous just based off the denominator of your value of your currency. That's off the price of gold moving up 
Now, there are scenarios where you could see uranium at just ridiculous levels. And, and I'm talking mainly with the denominator blowing out along with the numerator compressing like heck. And you come up with, with numbers that are astronomical. And then you have to also think <clears throat> you have money rotating at the same time. So you've got liquidity. It's a, a liquidity problem or, or too much liquidity coming into the system, increasing interest rates and having money rotate at the same time you've got supply demand imbalances. Uh, the supply demand imbalances is your capital kind of commodity cycle lining up with liquidity event. I don't think people understand what that means. They, I don't think they fully grasp it. I'm going to try to explain it. The liquidity event is from liquidity entering the system of, of homes, the, the expansionary phase of homes and the loaning of new money into the system. That has an impact on money flows. But this is also aligning with a gigantic commodity underinvestment cycle. So we've got all this underinvestment with copper, with uh, uranium, oil, doesn't matter what it is, tin, just keep going, cobalt, lithium, on and on and on and on. We don't have enough money invested in uh, the production growth of those um, minerals. So we've got liquidity coming into the system and the rotation of money wanting to rotate over at the same time that we are going to compress the living poop out of the ratios of all these uh, minerals. The pricing that could potentially happen sometime during this bull market will leave you with ludicrous numbers. Ludicrous numbers. And it's not me making this up. This would be history repeating itself. So I'll throw out a number. And this is, this is just an experiment, guys. It's a thought-provoking thing. It is a possibility. I don't know if it's going to hit it. Um, it's not a prediction. I'm just throwing out numbers based off of historical um, historical things happening again. <clears throat> so let's say we get to a one to four ratio on uranium, one to four. And let's say gold at that time is $5,000, like it took off. So if it's at 5,000, we divide it by four, uranium could very well be $1,250 a pound. I know a lot of people, they've got this number in their head, $200 a pound uranium. Well, what if your denominator blows out to the, to the downside and your numerator compresses like heck? That's what you get. That's an inflation-adjusted psychological top. That is what the top is. Does it mean it's going to get there? No. Now, here's something. If we, hit, if we hit energy shortages, if we hit energy shortages, and these shortages happen um, across renewables, we we've already are burning as much natural gas, and natural gas goes to $620. Uh, a, a per barrel equivalent, which it has. Uh, we've got coal going through the roof, which it has. <clears throat> and we run into mineral shortages of renewables that we can't ramp uh, or we can't store this energy. Um, and we start turning back on uh, nuclear power plants. We are recommissioning them because we have energy shortages and we have to run them. What is the price of uranium at that time? If everyone wants it and there is no uranium to get, and they and and if you look at the elasticity of demand, if you look at the pricing structure, if if we go twenty or thirty cents up, which they already have for electricity prices, and let's say twenty or thirty cents delta on top of a regular price, every penny is two hundred dollars of uranium price. If we have like twenty five cents times two hundred, well, it'd be twenty five. Sorry, twenty five times two hundred. Uh, that's a five thousand dollar per pound price. Uh, of uranium. And this, guys, I'm not calling for this as a top. I'm not calling that this is going to get here. What I'm telling you is the, the elasticity, the inelastic, it's an inelastic demand. Like if they want this and you have a 25 cent, 30 cent move in electricity prices that you could absorb in the price, you could go all the way up to $5,000 uh, per pound uranium and still be within the, the affordability of what the current electricity prices are in some of these countries. So I'm not saying that the price will get there. What I'm telling you is that the current pricing supports this. It could support that. And 
<clears throat> every penny increase of kilowatt hour is about $200 per pound of uranium increase. So if, if the renewables, if we get into a large squeeze in energy and, and prices go up to, you know, they go up 25 cents a kilowatt hour, which means that natural gas is through the roof, which it is, and coal is through the roof, which it is in terms of prices, that uranium could come in here. And if they start to recommission things, this is kind of the cutoff of, 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 of it being affordable. Problem is the uranium isn't there. I, when everybody starts to run at it, I just don't think it's going to be there. So, uh, and it's and it can't get there very quickly because of the exactly what he said here that permitting and mine startups will prove to be a major impediment to supply growth. It's not going to be there. So, wh what is what is this going to be? I mean, what pricing? I, I have no idea what this what this is going to do. And at the same time, oil is going to go through the roof as well. Oil is going to go up quite dramatically because I think we're going to get squeezed in that at some point as well uh, this year and next year. So I don't know exactly where all this is going to go. I, I'm not trying to predict anything. What I'm just saying is that these things can squeeze far higher than potentially uh, what most people have. And it highly depends on how much money is in the system, the denominator, what that, that, that inflation adjusted number looks like when this occurs i don't know when it's going to necessarily occur and then the compression of the ratio against gold uh, and what that psychological limit is so yeah i'm throwing out ludicrous numbers but uh that's what history would suggest these are inflation adjusted numbers that's what the top is I, i'm not using an inflation adjusted number that some hedonic adjustment was applied to i don't use that i just use all right if gold's at this price what could the potential compression be against gold if historically we've gotten to a one to five or one to four compression every time in the bull market, well, why is this time different? Why should we compress less? If 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 gold's at you know twenty seven hundred dollars and we compress it down to five, I mean that's five hundred and forty dollars uh, a pound. That's that seems perfectly logical to me. And I'm not claiming any of these numbers, guys. I don't know where the price of gold will be when it compresses fully. Uh, I don't know when the the squeeze happens. It could be a year or two out still. And maybe gold's at three or $4,000. So, I mean, if you just throw these numbers out and you look at the compression and what the psychological limitations were in the past, um, you know, last bull market, we, we have nowhere near the energy prices in natural gas and oil that we do today. In terms of, I should say, natural gas prices are far higher. Oil, I think, will get there. But uh, this time is different. But we are natural gas. We're in an energy crisis. We didn't have an energy crisis back then. That was a liquidity event. Liquidity coming into the system was your denominator, not your numerator. We've got both happening right now. We've got the denominator falling down, which will, I think, happen. You're going to see a weaker dollar at some point. Um, we just have inflation worldwide. And then you're going to see your numerator compress like no other. So uh, keep this all in mind when you're looking and evaluating things and you're, and you're looking at uh, potential investments. Because uh, uranium is still an incredibly valued. The, the physical price of uranium is still incredibly well valued in comparison to gold. And oil has already taken off quite a bit. Uh, a lot of that, some of that valuation has been sucked out of it. But uranium still has a long runway. So I just wanted to bring that up uh, as I was reading through some of this. Uh, if you guys like the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.